The 31 days have finally come to an end. And what, of course, would I show off on Halloween? I've shown off the Michael Myers H2O uh, Hot Topic exclusive Funko Pop before, but I just recently got the regular Michael Myers, so I thought I'd do a... Oh, and yeah. Freaking... Thought I hit a hit a gold mine when I hit Walgreens, but all of them, like the Chucky, the ugh, all of them that I picked up from that trip, are damaged. The boxes are anyway. But I needed to get a Halloween. I needed to get a Michael Myers, a regular Michael Myers, and show the differences in the boxes, which you could tell even the front artwork is is obviously different, and. Uh, yeah, the stance is different too. But I wanted to talk about Halloween on Halloween because it just it just doesn't seem right not to. Um, I'm also going to be showing off. Um, a lot of people have been doing a lot of movie recommendations for uh, for Halloween, and uh, while I'll take recommendation recommendations on on books. But considering when I do read books, that's, when I read books, that's pretty much the biggest kind of book that I read are horror books. So I don't really see much of a point in talking about, talking a lot about that. Um, but uh, I, so I am going to give a couple of movie recommendations. Um, I've got the two. Michael Myers to show off and the differences between the two of them and uh then I'm going to do a, something a little bit a combination of the three I guess you'd say um but first let's get the Michael Myers out and have a look at them I'll do the close-ups I'll do some close-ups of these guys and then I'll move on to the next batch so uh yeah don't think that the end of the video is uh is the close-ups just yet because normally yeah this guy is like beat all to hell so i don't even really feel bad about popping this box open my goodness you on the other hand need a little bit more care uh, so yeah let me get these out and have a quick look at them okay so the one thing immediately you can tell the hair is different the sculpt is different. I believe this guy's a little stouter. Um, I like the differences that you see in this. Uh, in the original Michael Myers, his eyes are blackened. Um, even though you can see some skin around there, it's still dark around the eye holes as opposed to H2O where, I mean, let's face it, you, you practically could see his face through the mask. The eye holes were so wide, and you could see skin around there. But yeah, the different stances, uh, different outfits. Um, the hair is obviously different. Um, yeah, that's just it's really cool. <laughs> recommendations i wanted to go with the exorcist 3 which even though it's gotten a lot more steam than it did when it first came out i still think it's so horribly underrated and it really doesn't get the the, the attention that it deserves but uh this movie is got one of the i mean it it, it is you can skip two altogether go straight to three because uh the exorcist 3 is is a movie that will give you a genuine scare and uh it's 
wow, I just looked at the back. I, I don't know how many times I've seen this movie. And it says, look for Samuel L. Jackson's pro basketball, Patrick Ewing, and more bit roll surprises. I have never really looked for the bit roll surprises because, yeah, the the, the story alone just takes you out. It, it picks up... Um, a while after the first movie and uh a lot of the and uh it follows the detective that uh if you've read the book if you've read the book you've actually gotten some of the bits of this story this out of there because this was directed by William Peter Blatty the guy who originally wrote the exorcist and he took some of the stuff that he had put in the book and that didn't make the movie and he really wanted to that to be in in a movie so he kind of pushed it there was actually a uh a uh a book called legion and exorcist three um and um yeah so it, it wasn't quite as captivating as this was um and uh i don't even think i finished it but uh i tried because of my love for this i tried to get to the end of that one Next up is, I've got a very, I've, I've never seen anybody talk about this movie, but it's called uh, The Atticus Institute, and uh, it is honestly one of the best possession movies I've ever seen. Um, it's set up in a, uh, in a documentary style uh, format, and it is so well done that if you have somebody come in late to this movie. If you can somehow start the movie after the opening credits and uh, have somebody sit there, they will start asking you. I mean, this this is so well done that I had to look up to see, like, before the movie was even over, I actually looked up to see what the Atticus Institute was, uh, where it was located, you know, I mean, it was just so, so well done. I was starting to think it was based on a true story, but, um, it wasn't. <laughs> I mean, it's 100% fictional, um, but, uh, it's just, it's so well done. And, uh, it really, I mean, nobody in here, I've, uh, nobody that's in the movie, I recognize from anything else, um, and, uh, yeah, I can't say enough about this one. I literally did have, uh, a friend of mine, I, I told her exactly what I said, said to, said here, was if you could get somebody in after the opening credits are done to where they don't necessarily know that this is a fictional movie that you're watching, um, yeah, a friend of mine, uh, was watching this and her husband came in <laughs> and was sitting and watching. And this guy, I mean, he is, he, he, he was freaking out. He was like wondering when this happened and how it happened. And yeah, it was a documentary. It's it shot in documentary style and it is that good. Um, so if you get a chance to check this out, I don't even know where you can, see this i've only ever i got it on dvd and that was a complete surprise when i got it um so i didn't look up to see anywhere else to if anybody else streams this or what um because i had the dvd so i didn't really bother to find out but yes this would be my second recommendation um and third and last but definitely not least Oh my goodness, there's dust on the jacket. There shouldn't be because this gets out pretty regularly. The third recommendation I have is actually Trilogy of Terror, um, which, believe it or not, was made for TV. It's a made-for-TV movie, and if you have not seen this movie, you need to. Um, I mean, <laughs> it, stars, uh, it stars Karen Black, who this is after this movie alone pretty much put her in Scream Queen territory. There's three different stories. She stars in all three of them as different characters in each one. And uh, if 
you, if you have seen this, you'll know it because you'll know, you'll just be like, yeah, I, you, when you close your eyes, you'll see that little fucker in your head. And if you've seen this, you know exactly what I mean. You've seen that little motherfucker in your, in your head when you close your eyes. Um, I literally saw this as a kid on TV, um, or maybe it was on VHS or something. I just remember being a real little kid, saw this movie. I didn't see it again for many, many, many years. <laughs> um, I think I was already out of high school by the time I saw this again, but I never forgot it after that first time of watching it. Um, this little guy will stay in your head. He'll be there forever. You, you can't get rid of him. But yeah, those are the three recommendations I have as far as the, the Raise Chaos recommendations. If you've seen any of these, let me know what you thought of them. Um, if you check them out, come back and tell me or, you know, my Twitter and Instagram and all my social media is in the description below. And uh, yeah, just hit me up and let me know what you thought of them. If you, if you watched them and you liked them. Um, if you watched them and you didn't like them, don't message me. I don't want to hear from you. I'm just kidding. And last, but definitely not least, <laughs> I was going to talk about one of the things, one of the oldest and most enduring bits of horror or forms of horror to ever come around. Um, and that would be the Tales from the Crypt, Vault of Horror, the EC comic stuff. Um, part of the reason why I feel that these are so much more important than a lot of people, well, I think mainstream doesn't even realize how important these are. Um, a lot of this stuff uh, came out and, I mean, it was so graphic. I mean, these are all black and white copies, but like uh, the thing about the EC comics is, I mean, if you watched black, if you watched Frankenstein, um, when it came out, when it was brand new, that was in black and white. Um, if you watched anything horror related on TV, that was in black and white. Um, basically everything was in black and white, but tales from the crypt, the EC comics, that was in full color. And, I mean, you want to talk about a time where comic books outdid movies. The horror was so much worse. And everybody relegated in, you know, for the longest time, people always considered comic books being for kids. But these were so, so graphic and so detailed and so creative um, because they made so much of it. And they're, I mean, EC Comics is a safe bet. Uh, there are horror comics that... Uh, weren't as good. There were some that were, that were better, but I mean, if you're going to go down that road and look into these older, um, older comic books, uh, these old, old school horror comics, the stuff that they write books about this book, of course, is comic books. The government didn't want you to read, which is very, very telling. Um, with the, with the looks. Yeah, here's a couple with Eerie's Adventures. Some of them were good. Some of them were bad. But they were so graphic. And they just had this label that these are for kids. And everybody kind of freaked out. And just like this book is called perfectly The Ten Cent Plague. I mean, these are the books that were so graphic and so... Uh, so terrifying really at the time um i mean they're kind of they're kind of mediocre i mean you still get a good start from reading these but like uh but yeah i mean this is what basically made the comics code happen uh where the government wanted to ban comics and i mean if you if you can even fathom that like the government banning a medium it's like, like that was the only thing that could happen. I mean, that, that would be like the government trying to ban TV or movies or, you know, other kinds of books. Like, 
just like with any other medium, whatever you're, whatever you're interested in, there's a comic for it. And the horror was able to go into color before TV or movies to the point that it was too much. That it was the horror, horror comics and true crime comics. Um, if you even read the original, uh, uh, the original, uh, uh, hmm. The original comics code, uh, the ones that they put out. I mean, some of them you couldn't even have have a werewolf in it. You couldn't have a wolf man in it. You know, it was just like that. I mean, it was just kind of, you know, no zombies, no nothing, no nothing supernatural. You could not have a villain on the cover. That kind of stuff. I mean, they really put some strict stuff. Um, there was a book called Seduction of the Innocent, and reading that now. In today's comic, in today's world, um, I think Neil Gaiman put it best when he said, "I would love to see the comics that he was talking about in these in in his assessments." Um, I mean, he he went after horror comics, but he also went after superheroes. He's the one that really kind of started pushing the whole Batman and Robin are gay, um, which always bothered me because it was just like it just seemed like the gay uh the, the gay label that they wanted to put on batman and robin kind of superseded the fact that that would really be a pedophiliac relationship which would be much worse um i it's just like that yeah it, it just kind of really showed you the fact that they were just putting labels on things i mean wonder woman was oh my goodness she was so her well, I mean, yeah, let's face it. <laughs> Wonder Woman's creator did have a bondage thing. Um, but it wasn't nearly as deep or as dangerous as he was saying. He was he was saying that little girls were going to read about the strong female character and be upset by it. Um, but he was a quack doctor. Uh, he even admitted later that a lot of what he said, uh, oh, pretty much all of what he said was... Uh, was basically to drum up interest. I mean, this is this is right around the time of the McCarthy hearings. So, anytime if you could be in the charge and have an enemy to point the finger at, and there were hearings done in your name, your name was going to be remembered. And honestly, I don't think uh, Dr. Frederick Wortham really appreciated the name that he gathered from doing that. But uh, what it did leave us, where you don't even have to find any of those old comics, is the Tales from the Crypt survived. And um, this is obviously the set of uh, DVDs of the HBO Tales from the Crypt series, um, which is, even now, is just so... It's, it's just... It's all around uh, enjoyable to watch, because... I mean, they, everybody was in this. I mean, everybody that was anybody got to be in one of these episodes. Um, but even before that, I think in, uh, 72, I believe, 72 and 73, uh, there were movies, Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror, and a lot of people watch these, and they, they're, they're like, oh, these are the Hammer film versions. What, they're actually from Amicus Productions, um, which, uh, if you've never heard of Amicus, what Amicus did was, after Hammer Films went under, Amicus bought everything they could, even, used, even to the point where uh, Christopher Lee and... Uh, uh, Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing are both prominently featured in these. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, Joan Collins is in this. Um, and I think those are the biggest names in here. Um, but if you're a fan of, of older movies and everything, you'll definitely recognize a couple more. Um, I can't see anybody on, on right off the top of my head that I think would really be recognized. But, uh, but even some of these were readapted into this. And, uh, so you've got the Amicus films, you've got the, 
Tales from the Crypt uh, TV series. And then you've got Bordello of Blood and Demon Knight, which were the two more popular uh, Tales from the Crypt movies that came out. Um, when you think Tales from the Crypt movies, these are the two you think of. But there was a third one uh, called The Ritual, and it actually did have the Tales from the Crypt Presents, uh, which actually has, uh, it, it has Peter, not Peter, uh, Tim Curry, and uh, what's her name, Jennifer Grey, and that's post-surgery, so she's, she's pretty much unrecognizable. But, I mean, Tim Curry and Tales from the Crypt, come on. So, there were a couple more. The only one I could... I know there were at least two more. Uh, I know the Frighteners with Michael J. Fox um, actually almost carried the Tales from the Crypt Presents banner on it. But at, by that time, uh, I think since nobody really went and saw this one, uh, they never they never went back for, for anything else. But it's a real shame that uh, a lot of the stuff... I, I love the fact that it still exists and you can still see it. Um, and, I mean, it, I mean, these are newer versions, but all these stories, I think with the exception of one story in, in all of the entire uh, TV series, wasn't adapted from one of the original uh, Tales from the Crypt comics or Vault of Horror. They did Vault of Horror and Tales from the Crypt uh, and I think Weird Stories. I can't remember what the third major title of, but all three of those comic series, there's only one episode out of all seven seasons of Tales from the Crypt that was not adapted from one of those original, original uh, Tales from the Crypt comics. So those are my Halloween recommendations. Um... You still have time to check some stuff out. If you, if anything I have recommended strikes a chord with you, and I would definitely love to hear about it if you end up ch checking anything out or if you want to talk about any of it. Um, like I said before, my, my uh, social media is down in the comments and not in the comments. My social media is down in the description. These guys... <laughs> Yeah, okay. So, yes, it is Halloween. It is about mid-afternoon on Halloween. It's Saturday. I've just completed the 31 days of Halloween with Ray's Chaos. I did not realize what a chore this was going to be. Now I'm tired. Now you're going to get some close-ups on the Michael Myers figures, the side-by-side -side comparisons of those guys. And I'm going to go rest. I hope to see you back soon. I hope you subscribe if you want more. Um, I want to do more talking about uh, the history of comics, uh, maybe some books that I found and movies, um, because, uh, yeah, my channel wasn't originally only supposed to be about pops, but that's kind of what it turned into uh, due to the pandemic, because that was the easiest thing to do and have something new to show. But uh, I am interested, I would be interested in doing more uh, uh, different kinds of uh, content with uh, talking about comics or movies or, or horror in general. So let me know in the comments what you'd be interested in seeing and it will just, it'll give me ideas to go through the massive collection that I have. And... Um, I look forward to seeing you back because yes, I'll be back on election day <laughs> with another video <laughs> back to my regular Tuesday, Friday schedule. So if you're sick of me, you get a couple days off. 